Right, hey guys, finally I'm back with another video. It's not the most technical one because I'm doing some unboxing of uh, stuff people sent me months ago already. And I promised them to actually test some of the very exciting products here, but I haven't got around to doing that. But anyway, I'm here with uh, the unboxing video and I'm really looking forward to your feedback for your motivation um, to have me actually test uh, all those new cool products. And I'm really curious, so uh, let's get it going. All right, so I got some stuff from Wayne, uh, Wayne with the Retro Robin Show. I will link his uh, YouTube channel in the description below. So uh, let's uh, open one of the boxes he sent me and let's see what's in here. Uh, <laughs> look at this, this print here, <laughs> isn't that cool? This is uh, how we ship stuff and it's really cool. And I didn't ask for this, he just uh, ships me stuff from time to time. Uh, I hope you don't mind sending you this, give it a go. So this is a solder iron, oh no, it's a, I didn't know, it's a solder remover uh, with built-in heat elements so it, this might make things fa uh, go faster so I'm, I'm, I will actually give it a try not now but um, I'm really curious uh, how this works because until now I've tried a lot of other things like just a normal solder remover or for example the uh, Japanese best one that, that should be around and I actually don't like using it it's, uh, it's hard to the thumb you know and I have a desolder station so let's give this a try let's move it aside for now Right, I really love these letters from Wayne with all the colors. Uh, there is, I think, some address in it. Yeah, but I won't show that, of course. Um, but it's uh, really cool how he writes me things. Next uh, is something I have no clue what's in here. Um, he sent me this separately. Um, maybe this is even a letter, so I should open it as well because it's an envelope. Maybe there's something in here. Uh, I hope my uh, microphone is not too bumpy because it's uh, really sensitive to everything. I don't think that there's a letter in here, so this is no uh, no use, as you can see. How should I open this? Yeah, here's a line. I don't know. Oh, look. Ah, it's a mug. What kind of mug is this? Look at that. Isn't that cool? It's a ZX Spectrum Plus mug. And it's the correct size for uh, uh, four espressos, which is my, uh, my kind of coffee. Wow. Thank you, Wayne. This is really cool. Thank you. Next one. Uh, it's a letter. Feels like there's something in here. And again, look at the decoration here. <laughs> oh man, that guy's cool. He was really cool. Let me check if there's no uh, address in here. No, there's not. Here's a thank you gift in time for Christmas for all the wonderful products you make for all the retro loving community. You're keeping the ZX Spectrum alive and making a lot of people feel young and happy again. Uh, after all, nostalgia is great and the world, thanks to people like you and others, is better for us all. So have a gift for me and drink if you like. Oh, that's with a mug, I think. Uh, yours sincerely from the Retro Robin Show, Wayne. This is really cool. Cool, thank you. Um, okay, next one. The envelope is cool as well. <laughs> uh, if, if I show this to my daughter, she... Uh, we'll claim it. Another box from Wayne again, and you may think he's a stalker or something. He's not. <laughs> he's just a really cool dude. Um, and actually he shipped a real huge box with uh, lots of stuff that he ordered. I was really late and I finally got around to completing his, uh, all, of, all of his orders and shipping it. So let's see what's in here. There's a load of uh, tape around. Oh, where should I put this? Um, let's put it not, not on the mark, but in this box here. Oh my. I have to clean up after this. What's in here? I have no idea. Looks like another mug. I'm not used to getting so much stuff in. I, I don't ask for anything. This is just really cool. It's a, it's a 40k Spectrum mug. Um, microwave proof even. Why should you put it in the microwave? Uh, I never put old coffee in the microwave. Uh, just put new coffee in. Um, oh wow, look at the black edge here. That's cool. Really cool. And the quality is great. You can almost feel the keys here. There are some layers of paint and you can feel it. You can feel the keys. It's really cool. Spectrum 48. I'm not sure which I like better now because I like the ZX Spectrum Plus. But the 48K, hmm, it's a cool as well. Uh, and some of the stuff you sent me is a Bluetooth uh, speaker and loads of LEDs. Uh, oh, there's even an app, I think. Actually, you can program all the LEDs on, on this uh, speaker, which is cool. <laughs> Uh, so again, uh, Wayne, thank you for all the gifts. All right, let's uh, give it a clean and get to the other stuff here. And voila, we have a clean desk. Uh, this is from Jan Kusirev from Czech Republic. He is the owner of the 8-bit company, uh, which was known for the MBO2 interface from the past. 
And there is something in this box that's related to that, uh, the upper box. And underneath there is something else which is really cool and uses, uh, I think, kind of the same technology. I know I was uh, very interested in the MBO2 interface in the past uh, because it was the most complete and the quickest floppy disk interface and ID interface that was around until then. Um, it even had a Z80 DMA chip and other stuff, um, but I never spoke to Jan Kusira back in the days, so about, what, let's say, 20 years ago. Uh, but I was uh, talking a lot to Ingo Triple and some other people about the MBO2, and I'm not sure how I got my hands on MBO2, I think from Ingo, because I was trying to uh, create a successor of the MBO2 or a clone, uh, but I never got around to finishing that. And so in the end, I sent Ingo all my stuff, if I remember correctly, and he sent me one complete MBO2 plus IDE, which was his version of the MBO2 interface. And years later, I also obtained a MBO2 original interface from the 8-bit company, so from Yen. Um, but let's see what's in these boxes, because uh, um, Yen advanced a lot, I can tell you. Let's start with the upper one here. Uh, I think I already opened this, I just, just close it once again, because I didn't have time to test it properly yet. Ah, look. Yeah, I think I opened this once. Uh, so some cards, boxes, and this is empty. What is this? It's an adapter from, I think, DisplayPort to HDMI. Okay. Not sure what it is for. I have to check. Uh, there is a cable here. Uh, this is a mini DisplayPort cable, indeed. So it's for that little box here. So some stickers from the MBO3 Plus interface. Uh, so this interface is the successor of the MBO2. Let's check the, the specifications. So it's compatible uh, with ZX Spectrum uh, issue 2, issue 3B, issue 6. I'm not sure why the issue 4 is not in here. Um, it's compatible with issue 2, uh, sorry, uh, ZX Spectrum Plus 2, 2A, all issues, and Plus 3. Um, it also works on Harlequin issue 2D, so the 128K versions uh, and Sparrow Light clone. Uh, okay, cool. Um, first test, here are some, some information about how to use the interface, which I haven't tested yet. I'm, I'm kind of ashamed because he uh, sent me this, this interface months ago and uh, it's really valuable because of the, the parts that they're in and the case, which is a really uh, high quality printed. Uh, so some information about using the interface, which I will do later on, um, but I really like to hear from you um, how fast you would like me to see to test the MBO3 interface. So this is the interface itself. Let's get it out of the uh, anti-static bag here. And the first thing that, that's noticeable is the really awesome quality of this print here. It, it's actually 3D printed, but I'm, I'm really curious how he did this. Um, how did he... How did he print this? Is, is it made of several layers? I don't know. I, I want to ask him. Um, anyway, there's a small uh, matrix display here for uh, several features. Ah, look. So we have a compact flash slot and two micro SD card slots here. So there's actually one micro SD card in already. Here's the um, mini display port output. Um, okay, joystick interface. Yeah, there's a joystick symbol even. How did you print this? This quality is really awesome. I don't think my printer can do this. And a sound output. And at the other side are two USB connections. Um, one is for mouse, I think, because there's a symbol of a mouse there. And one is for, I don't know, programming, updating the uh, FPGA, maybe. All right, there's some LED indicators. Uh, it's slightly visible that there are LEDs underneath. Um, this says SD1, SD2, I think, Compact Flash, DMA. Extra button reset, which is uh, lowered so you won't touch this by accident. An NMI button, and that's a complete interface. So I'm really curious about this. Please let me know if you want to see me uh, test this interface. Uh, let me know, please. Right. Um, and in here, I think there's the newest product from, from Yen that he worked on for quite a while. Let's see what's in here. Hey Ben, here's a small gift for your work related to ZX Spectrum. A small gift? Uh, this this is a huge gift, man. It's a, it's a really cool product. It's a complete Element ZX board with a 20 MHz Z80 CPU and an FPGA module. I hope you like it. Uh, yes, I will. 
Thanks again for the ZX Spectrum Plus 2 cases you sent me before. Yeah, I think he asked me and I sent him something like six or so, some months ago. Uh, they helped me during development and testing. I added an uh, SD card to the package as well, so you can test some exclusive features of this board. Cool. Um, the other things are about uh, talking about production. He's uh, asking me if I'm interested in producing this board, which I think I am. We had a Jan and his family over some months ago. Um, we met him and had lunch and uh, it was very cool. Uh, I hadn't taste herring. <laughs> I don't think his family liked it a lot. <laughs> But it's really Dutch, so I thought he, uh, they, they, should have, they should taste it at least. Uh, but it's really cool to meet him and his family and talk about ZX Spectrum stuff and, and uh, all kinds of things. And so we talked about the Embryo 3, we talked about this new development, um, which was uh, not ready yet back, back then, but he was working on it. Um, so what is this? Um, is there anything else? No, say hello to your wife and kids, which I will do. Uh, I had this box in for a couple of uh, months as well, so um, I apologize to Jan and uh, as, as the same as uh, with Wayne. Uh, sometimes I really have so much stuff that you can see, see some things in the background. Uh, there's so much stuff here that needs to be finished one day. Uh, it's really hard to prioritize. But anyway, uh, let's get to the manual and then get to the board. So, whoa, look at that. 16 pages of information about this board. Uh, your Element ZX is a machine that can work in various configurations and provide performance and user convenience not commonly available in this sort of 8-bit computers. Uh, it's mainly a classic ZX Spectrum with which you can work immediately after switching on. Cool! No complicated settings or introductory menus. That's what I like. I, I really hope uh, it's as simple as he says. The Element ZX has a built-in SD interface and allows access to two SD cards in all operating modes. Uh, it supports 48K, plus 2, plus 2A, Pentagon, uh, so uh, you can do a lot of things with it. Cool. Quick start with Element ZX. What you get? The Element ZX board. What else do you need? A case, 9 volt standard power supply for the ZX Spectrum. There's a rescue mode. Use this mode with a misconfigured setup or damaged ROM. Cool. Loads of features. I think there was a special version of ESX DOS for this board, including long file name support. So we'll see about that. Cool. So let's get to the board, uh, the actual board. Uh, there's some keycaps in here and some stickers again. One hour later. Yeah, okay, so that was cool. Uh, I think I, I discussed the whole board and I just noticed that I bumped my microphone. Off. Anyway, let's do it again. So let's uh, get over this board here and see what kinds of features this board has. Uh, so for one, we have a real Z80 CPU, a uh, ROM chip. Uh, this, I think, is the RAM. Uh, underneath here and at the other side of this uh, add-on board is the FPGA chip. Uh, so this is an FPGA module. Uh, it really fits in with this board, which is a uh, really dark black. Uh, okay, for, where will I start? The dip switches for configuration settings. I see two USB sockets. I'm not sure if those can be used, for example, for keyboard or USB mouse, maybe. I have to check. So there's a HDMI output. Uh, this board doesn't seem to have a analog output anymore. Uh, then we have a Switch 1, and an audio port. Here is a joystick port. Um, switch 2, this is a reset button. This is one of the SD card circuits. It's really small. Cool, I've never seen such small SD card um, circuits. Then when we continue, we'll see two extra options for joystick port. Here in between, we see two keyboard connectors. And you might think, well, these are only for plus two A or plus three keyboards. But actually, they also work with plus two keyboard, uh, but you just use only a piece of the connector. Then we have a second SD card connector here. Uh, some LED, and there's another LED here to indicate activity from the SD card slot. Then we have a FRAM. I'm not sure if that will show what's going on in RAM or so. I, I don't know. Uh, maybe it's in the manual. I'll have to check. Another LED here. And a cool thing I noticed is uh, two connectors for the tape quarters on a plus two or plus two A case. So you can use the original tape quarter from that case on this board, which is awesome because um, 
uh, why not you know if you can put it in, a, in such a case why not use the tape recorder uh, it's a really cool solution for that the power circuit is quite small it seems i guess because this doesn't use that much power uh, this says p plus 3.3 volts so i think this will create 3.3 volts there but obviously the z80 and the aprom and the edge connector will need 5 volts as well so i guess uh, there are some parts that will make 5 volts and there are some parts that will make 3.3 volts of it. Um, but that is the board, there's not much else on this board. So it's the FVGA, the Z80, the ROM and the connectors and that's mainly it. And of course the, the RAM, uh, which, is a, which is kind of simplistic because the FVGA is the core of the system and you can program it in any configuration you like. So it can do ZX Spectrum 48K, 128K, plus 2, plus 2A plus three, Pentagon and all other stuff just by changing the configuration. FVGAs are a replacement for all kinds of hardware, but in a single chip. They do not emulate uh, a system. They really simulate it at a hardware level. John is just a genius when it comes to programming FVGAs. Uh, so again, this is uh, made by Jan Kusier. This is uh, the board version 1.3 uh, from February this year. And I think in the back I noticed it was serial number 23. Obviously it, it has some similarities to the uh, ZX Spectrum Next board, uh, but this is, this is Jan Kusier's own implementation. So it, it, it's not a ZX Spectrum Next. This is Jan Kusier's implementation. I'm not sure if I, I'm able to do a co good comparison between uh, this Element ZX board and uh, ZX Spectrum Next. To be honest, I haven't used the ZX Spectrum Next board that much just to do some basic testing. So I'm really curious how this will work. I think this is a really cool board. If there's enough interest, I might consider producing this board. All right, so this is uh, the Element ZX. Um, I really want to thank Jan with, uh, for sending me this. And I really love that I can be part of his developments. Let me know if you want to hear more about this and see more in-depth tests. Uh, maybe I can do a couple of videos like uh, powering it on for the first time, seeing what it does with the manual next to it, um, and then maybe some more in-depth videos later on. So it's really uh, hard to find all the time that's required, but I, I'm, uh, I think I will get there in a while. All right. Yeah, all right. So thank you for watching this video. I hope to make more videos really soon. Let me know what you think of this video. Let me know what else you want to see. If you have any questions, please don't wait to sending me those, uh, like uh, sending comments underneath the video. Uh, if you have any questions for uh, Jen Kusira or maybe Wayne, uh, please leave them. And of course, visit Wayne's uh, Retro Robin Show YouTube channel. I know he, he makes lots of videos, so uh, you will like the channel as well. Again, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.